Coach, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about um, the development of some of the younger receivers like Preston Williams. We haven't seen Preston. I know he had COVID last week, um, but we haven't seen him for a long stretch before that. I, I, exactly where is he in his development as a receiver, He considering he started two years ago for the previous two years? Yeah, I think he's been doing a good job, you know, coming into the season, coming off the injury from last year and getting back from that and getting back to uh, – to full health and uh, he's been working hard in practice. And then to your point, just being on the virus list and, and, and missing that game and, um, you know, just looking forward to getting him back. But uh, he always works incredibly hard like the rest of them do in practice and continues to develop, whether that's in the pass game, run game, um, special teams. Um, now he, he's, he's done a good job. Uh, you, you say he's developing. Uh, he This is his least productive season. So where's where are we seeing the development? I would just say overall, it might not show up necessarily um, on Sundays per se, but you can see things in practice and things behind the scenes, whether that's from a um, recognition of coverages or different schemes or how um, different defenders are going to play him. I think he's been able to uh, notice things like that. And uh, just again, be, still being a very young guy in this league, there's still a lot of room for improvement, but uh, like I said, trending in the right direction. Thank you. David? Hey, Coach, uh, obviously we know Will Fuller won't come back this season after his setback that Coach Flores has mentioned to us. I wanted to know what you saw from him in the brief time you had to work with him, the way he went about his finger rehab and uh, where he is physically and mentally. Yeah, no, it was good good to be around. You know, unfortunate, uh, you know, what happened with the finger and all that, but uh, just a guy that is just, uh, you know, upbeat, good to be around, works hard. Um, just one of the guys just like, like hanging out with him talking about different things, whether that's on the field or off the field. But again, you know, unfortunate with uh, what happened to him with the injury, but, uh, you know, wishing the best for him and uh, just continue to uh, support him. Barry. Gosh, with, uh, with Fuller, has there ever been a moment this year where you've thought about what could have been knowing what a dangerous weapon he could have been for you guys? I think whether it's Will or, or, or any other scenario, it's so laser focused on that week, trying to beat that opponent and what we're going to do to find one win that uh, there's just not time in the day to really sit around and think about what could have been with a player um, decision here, decision there. Uh, we're always just focused on that practice, that meeting, that game, just trying to get one win that week. And, and just to clarify one thing on David's question with regard to Will, has he been around the team at all the last month? Have you seen him last month? I'll just keep those conversations and, uh, you know, how much we see Will and, and whatever we talk about really to keep uh, between me and him. Thanks. Daniel. Uh, good morning. I wanted to ask with, um, you know, Jalen nearing the, you know, breaking Anquan Bolden's rookie reception record, uh, nearing a, a thousand yards and potential to, to pass both um, on Sunday. Um, when you kind of look back at his rookie season as a whole, what what impressed you the most about uh, what he was able to do? And um, it seems like he's done everything this year, but what do you think is maybe the next step forward for him and um, kind of really cementing himself as a, you know, upper echelon wide receiver in this league? I think there's going to be a time and place to reflect back on um, from the time he got here up until this week and in and, and this game. But uh, yeah, I think it's just for the off season. right now. I know he's focused on this week. I'm focused on this week. The whole staff is just trying to find a way to get one win against New England. And then, uh, like I said, there will, there will be time to look back on those kind of things. But it's just laser focus at this point on, on trying to get this one win on Sunday. Yeah, I understand. Um, you know, if, if I may ask a question about the specific Titans game um, on Sunday, um, you know, late in that game, Tua was able to connect with with, uh, with Jalen on a, I think it was a 45 yard pass um, downfield. It was kind of one of those downfield passes that we kind of haven't really seen as much. You know, obviously he had a lot of success with that at Alabama. I guess from your from your perspective, from your vantage point, uh, what really worked on that play that it was able he was able to kind of get downfield and complete that uh, get that completion. Yeah, uh, anytime we get a, a play of, of, of that nature, it takes all 11 to um, really hold up on their end for what their responsibility is. So O-line, tight end, uh, running back did a great job in protection. Uh, Tua did a great job on the, on the throw. Uh, I thought Jalen ran a, a really good route, um, as well as Devontae and the underneath portion of it. So it really took all 11 on uh, that concept to get that done. And again, um, great ball, great catch. Uh, I thought Jalen, you know, he recognized the coverage and was able to be in the right spot and Tua knew where he was going to be and were able to push it down the field. You know, unfortunately, we couldn't get points out of that drive, but uh, 
that was just one of those, you know, good job of practice execution becoming game reality. Thank you. Travis. Hey, Coach, good morning. I, I was hoping you could teach me something again, as you usually do on these conversations. Uh, there was a, a ball to, to Waddle on the second possession where he kind of split the underneath defender and the over-the-top safety in a corner route, and he goes up to elevate for it, and the ball goes a little bit high. And it looked to me, after I've watched it about 100 times, like he maybe jumped a little bit early. I was curious what the kind of timing mechanism is in a play like that, where he goes up a little bit too early, the ball seems a little bit too high. Does he, does he elevate coming out of that break? Is it kind of something where he reads the football? If you know what I'm talking about, could you kind of just walk me through that? Yeah, just on that one, you know, it's not necessarily designed uh, for that, but him just reacting to it, um, just on, on on where it was. You know, there would be things like that where you're kind of designed to uh, maybe make a, a what we call it, a high point or a 50-50 catch, maybe uh, in the back of the end zone or a fade ball, something of that nature, where it's designed to beat the defender off the ground. Um, mm -hmm. On that particular play, it was just uh, just reacting to the throw. Okay, thanks, Coach. Joe? Hey, Josh, how's it going? Um, I was looking at some of the um, career statistics for explosive receivers. And one of the things I noticed is that a lot of guys increase their yards per catch, like in year two and then year three. What do you think might be some of the reasons that, you know, a guy like Tyree Kill, for example, it was a huge jump. What do you think might be some of the reasons that explosive players sometimes maybe take a little time to show that potential in yards per care catch and what can lead to that um, uh, that's an interesting stat. I don't know if something I've necessarily thought about or, or um, you know, been presented with a question like that. This is just coming off the top of the head, but I don't know if it's something where guys are understand coverage is better and they can attack it deeper down the field and there's more trust between, you know, not that there wasn't trust between him and, and, uh, and Mahomes early, but I don't know if it's something that they're on a better page there or the, the first thing that came to my mind was that if they catch it and they have a better feel for, again, like where defenders are in different zones, that they didn't get a chance to find the voids and, and get the ball vertical, which could create uh, longer catches as well. But um, without ever thinking about it, I think those two kind of stick out. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of factors. Like you said, the chemistry between the quarterback and the receiver, the protection, the, the play calling, the experience and identifying defenses. But yeah, it's something to look at. Like even Jarvis Landry, his numbers jumped uh, year to year in yards per catch. So thank you. Absolutely. We have time for one more. We'll go to Barry. Hi, Josh. I want to ask you about two young guys, just since it's the last time we'll talk to you until August, probably. Uh, Lynn Bowden, uh, just based on what you saw, the offseason program, July, August, what's the skill set there that leaves you intrigued that maybe something more can be extracted? And then Kirk Merritt, I want to ask about his skill set as well. If you could start with uh, Lynn, please. I thought Lynn did a good job from the time, you know, we traded for him to uh, developing last year and then, and then getting on the field and really playing a, uh, a critical role for us, really down the stretch um, at the end of last season. And did a nice job in the offseason program. Did a, did a nice job uh, in camp. You know, it was unfortunate to to have the injury and and and, and have that setback. But um, talked to Lynn on a, a good basis. He's he's in a good place. He's in a good place with the, with the injury. Um, and just you know, looking forward to working with him in the offseason. But uh, I think the skill set is no different than we we saw last year on just the ability to uh, run after catch, make guys miss. Um, you know, physical with the ball. Um, again, like everybody else, being able to understand coverages and voids and zones is always something that we're trying to focus on. But um, now he's in a good place. Uh, when it comes to Kirk, uh, really the, a lot of the same things where developed last year, didn't really get his chance as much. Not that he's had a ton of opportunities this year as well, but he did uh, you know, have his first catch and playing a little bit of teams. Uh, he works extremely hard in practice, wants to do it the right way. Uh, he's, he's, he's a joy to be around. Um, it's been good for the last couple of years and just it's kind of the same thing. Just looking forward to getting um, into the offseason with him, uh, uh, you know, after this weekend and just continuing that in the right direction.